Welcome to New Faculty OTS Orientation. My name is Cindy Caravello and I'm from the Office of Technology Services. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the services and resources that are available to you through OTS. And under that umbrella are CIOT, OTS Training, SES, and Client Services. We're also going to talk about PeopleSoft, what it is and, and how you get into PeopleSoft. We're going to talk about email, uh, what your options are when you're on campus and when you're um, off campus. And we're also going to talk about wireless to use secure and how to sponsor a guest account. So let's start off by talking a little bit about PeopleSoft. Now PeopleSoft is your online campus solution and it's available to students, faculty, and staff and it gives you access to real-time information. So it's up to date. Um, it's a way for you to communicate with your students and advisees. You can post grades, access your class roster, change your schedule, email students on your roster, or view your advisee roster. So let me just go out and show you how to get into PeopleSoft. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my web browser, and I am going to take you to the portal. Now, right now, I am inside Towson. If you were at www.towson.edu, all you would do is click on my TU at the top of the screen, and then you are in the portal. And notice under top links, there's something that says Towson Online Services PeopleSoft. So you're just going to click on that. You're going to put your net ID in there and your password. And simply press click on sign in. And there you go. That's how easy it is. I'm going to go ahead and sign out of there. And I'm going to stop sharing my web browser and take you back into the PowerPoint presentation. So that's PeopleSoft, and that's how you get into PeopleSoft. The next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, OTS and the different departments underneath of it. So let's start off by talking about CIOT, which is the Center for Instructional Advancement and Technology. And I think one of the most important things about CIOT is that it is uh, free to you. So there's no cost. So we really hope that you take advantages of our services here. And there's three integrated parts. It's technology, multimedia, and instructional design. And I'm going to take you all through all three of those parts. I want you to notice that our website is www.towson.edu slash CIOT. But I want to point out to you that we have put together a website just for you as new faculty that has links to everything. And I'm just going to share my web browser again, take you out there, and show you how to get to that. Again, you might have a little delay when you see my web browser. I went to the address line and typed www.edu slash faculty info. Again, this was set up just for you, and you're going to notice that there are links to all the services under CIOT. And if you want to go to the main CIOT page, you just click on the link at the top. And as you scroll through, you're going to see for each of the departments there are links. And this is going to help you for a while um, to get to these areas. If you're not sure what to type in the address line or what exactly to search for, again, this is just out here for you. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to actually click on Blackboard here. So you, as you can see, I go right to the Blackboard site. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to go back to my presentation. And again, I'm going to start off with CIOT, and I'm going to go into all these different areas. So let's start off with Blackboard. Now Blackboard is a way, to you connect, is a way for you to connect with students outside the classroom. You do not have to use Blackboard. However, we highly recommend that you use Blackboard. Um, it is just a wonderful resource for you. It's a way for you to deliver fully, fully online classes, hybrid, or web-supported classes. And what can you do with Blackboard? Well, you can distribute all kinds of files. You can put your syllabus out there, a PowerPoint presentation, a lecture, a video. You can uh, collect and grade assignments. You can hold dis discussion forums. You can generate tests. The list goes on and on and on. We do have classes throughout the year on Blackboard. And also, I'm going to actually take you out there and show you again how to get into Blackboard. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to point out is that we do have self-help documents. 
and we have just a multitude of resources, videos to help you out. So notice in this slide that you can go to www.towson.edu slash blackboard and then click on the blackboard link. But I'm going to take you back to the portal and show you how to get in there into Blackboard through the portal. Again, I'm going to share my web browser. And let me take you from scratch, www.towson.edu. And I'm on the main page. Again, to get into the portal, I want to point out, just click on my TU. And here you are. And also under top links, remember that's how we got to PeopleSoft, but you can also get to Blackboard from here. And you're going to put your net ID and password in there. And here you go. This is how you get into Blackboard. Now, on the left-hand side, I'd like you to notice under links that there are self-help documents and tutorials there for you. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I want to take you on the left-hand side to something called Faculty Quick Start. And this is just step-by-step the critical steps that you would need to take in order to learn Blackboard. So it'll tell you what to do first, second, third, and fourth. And there's even additional steps here. This is wonderful because not only are there documents that you can view, but you can also do videos if you'd like. So if you don't have time to, um, to read through the documents, just take the short videos. And we keep them under five minutes because we know that time is limited for you. So that's Blackboard. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. And again, I'm going to take you back to my presentation. If at any time you have a question, you can email Blackboard at blackboard at towson.edu. And they guarantee a 48-hour turnaround time. Next, I want to talk to you about multimedia services. Multimedia services is physically located in the Cook Library in the CIOT Lab, which is on the fourth floor, all the way in the back of the library. Um, they do a multitude of things for you. Um, I do want to point out, for any of their services, you really should give them a two-week turnaround time. But first of all, they do graphic design, and they do poster creation. So if you have a conference or a research project, for a poster session, they will do a poster for you. They will also do course-related posters. They'll graphically design them for you, and they'll print them out. And they do a fabulous job. They also do video production and editing. So let's say you're having a guest speaker come in. They will come out, and they'll, they'll videotape your guest speaker. They will videotape you. They'll create a script for you. They'll help you create a script. They'll sit down with you and record your uh, presentation, and then you can make that available on Blackboard or through a link. You can email it to your uh, participants or to your students. You can also export this to DVD, and they will help you do that as well. Um, they also do uh, some other things, such as DVD, CD duplication, and they will also convert files. They'll convert one file type to another file type. We have a wonderful instructional design team here, um, Audrey Cutler and Latanya Dyer. And what they do is um, they help you revise your, your courses. They will help you with your face-to-face -face courses, with hybrid or online courses. And the way that they will do that is they will help you write your objectives, help you with assessments, activities, instructional materials. You can uh, set up one-on-one. -on -one uh, some one-on-one -on -one time with Audrey or LaTanya, and they'll help you out with that. I'm going to take you out to the web again, and I'm going to show you their website, or their link off of the CIOT website, I should say. So let me take you out to the web browser again. And this time I'm going to type www.calson.edu slash CIOT. And on the left-hand side, you're going to notice it says Instructional Support. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you can see um, this is where our instructional design team has their website. I'm going to click on the Basics of Instructional Design. And this is just a, a wonderful little step-by-step, um, step -step, um, the Basics of Instructional Design. And you can take a few minutes and look through this if you'd like. 
Um, this was just a, a nice little addition to the website, so I wanted to take you out there and show you that. Not only uh, does our instructional design team offer um, help with your courses, they also offer uh, an emerging technology workshop series. And what that is, is that's actually faculty members that um, conduct these sessions, and they conduct sessions on emerging technologies, so the newest technologies out there. And like I said, they're conducted by faculty members, and if this is something you would like to be involved in, they're always looking for faculty members to present and also to attend these series. Um, they're held monthly at a Lunch and Learn workshop. Let me tell you what has been offered in the past, iPad, uses for teaching and learning, VoiceThread, adding multimedia to your online documents, and gesture-based computing for research. So those are just a few of the uh, workshops that were offered in the past. They also have two teaching circles going on at this time, but they do teaching circles. Now, um, Blackboard is available right now and WebEx. And this is a way, again, for faculty to get together and talk about best practices, uh, things they've been using that they find that work well. Um, also, they have a Blackboard community where you can find out more. And let me go out again and take you to, um, I'm going to take you to Blackboard. And I'm going to show you how to get into the Blackboard community. Again, I'm going to go to Towson.edu. I'm going to go to MyTU. And I'm going to go to Blackboard. Now, I've already logged in. So at the very top, you're going to notice I have a, a tab called Community. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now, I've already added the Community of, mer of Emerging Technology. But if you have not, over here you have a search box. All you have to do is type Emerging in there, click on Go, and you're going to see it pop up here. Click on the down arrow, and then all you have to do is enroll in this. Now, I'm going to take you into the Emerging Technology community and show you what's available. It might take just a second for that to come up. But it does have the workshops that they are planning. Um, it has their events calendar, has discussion boards, um, and so on and so forth. Presentations, it has a blog. So if that's something you're interested in, I know they're always looking for faculty members to both attend and also to be presenters. Also, um, Sanxi workshops are available to you, again, free of charge. And these are fully online workshops. Towson University um, holds the College Pass membership. It is a way for you to connect with other faculty members. There are a limited number of seats, so if you want to sign up for a class, then you would, would need to get in on that. And it's, again, it's free. All our services are free to you, regardless of your status. So what you would do is go out to the website, and let me take you out there once again. And this time I'm going to go to www.towson.edu slash CIOT to get to our landing page. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on Workshops. And here is the Sloan C Workshops. And I'm going to click on the link for upcoming workshop dates. I'm going to click on that link. I just want, to see, I just want you to see what's available. So right now, um, as you can see, online growth and challenging environments, um, PowerPoint lists, building effective interactive presentations, um, enhancing your course's accessibility the easy way, all fully online so you can take them when it's convenient for you. Next, I'm going to take you, tell you about the digital media classroom. And I'm actually sitting in a digital media classroom now, right now. Um, the DMC is used to capture the instructor's lecture and presentation. Um, and then you can make that presentation available online to your students. 
So you can simultaneously teach your students live. So you can have folks in the classroom, and also you can do a live stream to distance learners. You can pre-record segments. Um, maybe you, maybe it's snowing and you wanted to pre-record uh, segments and have that available. You can do that. Um, you can make it available um, through a hyperlink if you'd like. Um, recordings are all archived. Um, you can view them on your mobile devices. So you can record little snippets of your of your course, the whole course, if you'd like. Uh, you do have to reserve the DMC um, and just come in and, and use the resources available to you. There are 20 digital media classrooms across the campus. Um, I'm sitting in the one in the Cook Library, 404B. In addition, WebEx, which is what I'm using right now for this presentation, um, WebEx is also a way for you to teach online with your students. Again, if it's snowing, you can go ahead and um, pre-record or record a session and and um, make that available, or you can do it live, so you can have your students actually call in from home. Now, you do need a couple things. Um, you're going to need a microphone and some speakers. You do not need a webcam, so it's nice. It makes it a little more personal. Um, each college has eight sponsored accounts, and the way it works is that every semester, LaTanya contacts the associate dean and asks them the names of the folks that are going to be using WebEx, and they submit that. So if you are interested in using Web, WebEx as a teaching tool, then you might want to let your associate dean know. So you can talk to people um, out of state, out of the country, um, and you can see that you can look at your PowerPoint presentations, you have a chat feature, you also can share the web browser, which you have seen I have been doing. Um, you can share video, which is pretty new, and you as the presenter, you have you have um, all the power. So you can mute microphones um, if you'd like. Usually, um, uh, also there's breakout sessions that are available. So you can have, you know, little groups of breakout sessions and you can kind of go in and out of those breakout sessions to find out what people are talking about, what your students are talking about. Also, we have a CIOT faculty lab that is available to you. Again, that's in the Cook Library on the fourth floor, and that is all the way at the back of the fourth floor. We have computers, Macs, and scanners available for you. You can see our hours right here on the slide, 8 to 6, Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4.30 on Friday. We really hope you come and take advantage of that. It is a way for you to actually meet with um, meet with OTS training or meet with an instructional designer. You can also meet right there in the faculty lab as well. Please take advantage of that service. OTS training uh, offers a multitude of different services to you. They offer public workshops on Word, Excel, PowerPoint. We have some iPad classes now. We have some Mac classes available to you. And I'm going to take you out there and show you where uh, to find that information. They also, we also do CLA classroom technology training. Um, actually, it's smart classroom training now, just not for the CLA because the smart classrooms are across the entire campus. We also have traveling trainers, and what that means is that we will come to your location. Maybe you have a special topic you'd like us to teach uh, to a small group. We will come out, bring our own laptops with us, and, and talk about that subject. And we'll do one-on-one -on -one training, so if you want to know how to do a mail merge, give us a call, and we'll do it in either the faculty lab, or we'll come to you, or you can come to us. We have self-help documents, and we also have lynda.com tutorials. So let me take you out to the website again and show you where you can find information. So this time I'm going to go to www.towson.edu slash OTS training. Again, don't worry about remembering these redirects. You can go to that faculty info page that I talked about at the beginning and click on these links. And you can always use this search box up here in the upper right-hand corner. But I'm going to start off by clicking on workshops on the left. And you can see that there we have a calendar and registration here. So here's our calendar of what's coming up.
I'm going to go to Self-Help Documents and Movie Tutorials. And these are all of our subject areas. I'm going to go up here to Office 2010 and click on that. And you can see we just have just a multitude of documents available to you. Um, and they're divided into short subject matters. We also have something called lynda.com, uh, which is online software tutorials. And we hold um, a few licenses. I think it's 12 or 13 licenses now. And you can actually get a seven-day license. And you would contact Roger Rand in order to do that. So you contact him, let him know that you want a license for that. There are hundreds and hundreds of topics, not just software, but soft skills, just a multitude of topics. And you can do this at your leisure. So it's 24-7. So um, if you're up at night, you can go ahead and take a lynda.com tutorial. Also, new this year, we had uh, VoIP telephones installed. And our VoIP telephones, we have created a website for you as well. Um, we have a quick user guide uh, available on the website. And also, we have a ton of tutorials. New with the VoIP phone, um, you're going to notice that you're going to get your voicemail in Outlook. So you can listen to it in Outlook. You can get it on your smartphone. So if you wanted to know about um, how to set up your out-of-office greeting, I'm going to go ahead and take you out to the web browser. So this time I went to www.towson slash phones. And on the left-hand side, there is a training and support link. And you're going to notice we have video tutorials self-help documents, and we have that quick user guide. And the quick user guide is just a way for you to see everything that you would, that you would use, the basic things you would use um, right here on a little cardboard um, quick user guide. So there it is. So you can print that out. Student computing services are the services that are here for students, but there's also some things available to you as faculty members through SES. Now, they have a service desk, and they'll, they offer technical support for students. They'll do things like remove viruses from the students' computers. They also have a computer lab with 50 PCs and 10 iMacs. They allow students to come down and um, they can pay to have things printed. It's 10 cents a page or a dollar for color. They have a studio downstairs where they'll record for you, for the students. Um, they have a little bit of rehearsal space down there. Uh, SCS is located in, in uh, Cook Library, and it is a very popular place, as you could probably um, already figure out. Also, the services that are provided for faculty are Scantron test scoring, if that's something you still do, uh, student voice consultations. Student voice used to be, um, student voice, excuse me, is now Campus Labs. It used to be student voice. Now it's Campus Labs. And Campus Labs is a way for you to do online surveys. Um, this is a wonderful service. Again, it is free of charge to you. So you, it allows you to do um, a survey and send it out to your students. And then they will tally up the score. They'll give you graphs, uh, and so on and so forth. And they also do a camera loan service for um, faculty as well. So they have some, some offerings for the faculty. Client services is your first point of contact for your computing needs. So you're going to want to know this number, 410-704-5151. And 222 is what you would press to get right through, because there's going to be options when you call, and 2 is for faculty. And you would let them know what your issue is, if maybe you need to change your password, or your mailbox is full, maybe. Uh, things like that. They can help you out with all of those needs. 
They also do um, classroom and computer lab technologies where they um, actually design the classrooms. They um, also field services as part of client services. And that's kind of like the second level support. So if the help desk can't help you with your needs, then they will either send somebody out there or they'll put a they'll put in um, a request to send somebody out the, there or elevate it to that level. Also, you can email them at helpcenter at towson.edu or you can, um, they'll take walk-ins, again, they're in Cook Library on the first floor, so they offer on-site support. Using email at Towson, now the standard is Outlook, and you should use um, the, um, the version that's on your computer. So the local version of Outlook when you are here at Towson, and I'll show you how to get to that. Uh, also, we have the Mac standard is Outlook 2011. So if you don't know how to get to Outlook, it's probably on your desktop. I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop now and show you what the icon looks like. So on my desktop, this is my Outlook icon, and you would just double click on that. Or you can go to Start, All Programs, go down to Microsoft Office, and then to Microsoft Outlook. Now Outlook allows you to send messages, it has a calendar feature. It has a contacts feature. It has tasks. So we do recommend that you use, well, that is our, it is our standard here. So we recommend that you use that. Now, when you are off campus, you have a couple different solutions. And number one, um, one solution is something called Outlook Web App. You don't have as many options in Outlook Web App, but almost. Um, it's it's almost as as good as the the standard ver version, the local version, local copy on your machine here at Towson. So I want to take you out to the web again, show you how to get into Outlook Web App. Very easy to do. So it's simply Outlook. Edu. Again, net ID and password. I wanted to make sure I didn't have my caps lock on there. And there you go. As you can see, the look and feel is a little different, but you do have your inbox, your calendar, your contacts, and your tasks. You can set your out of office assistant uh, right from here as well. So almost as good. Real fast, real easy when you're off campus. Now, you also have another option when you are at home, and that is called the virtual workspace. Now, the virtual workspace is fantastic because it allows you not only to get into the full version of Outlook, but it also allows you to get into Word and Excel and PowerPoint. So if you don't have them at home, you can access them right here. So I just went to vw.towson.edu. Again, I'm going to put in my net ID and password. The first time that you get into virtual workspace, you're going to have to download something called the Citrix client. Now, it's not hard. All it'll just prompt you through a little wizard and then you'll Install that Citrix client and you're good to go. Now when you get into it, you're going to click on Towson Desktop. And this is going to take a couple minutes uh, for that to launch. OK. Um, I want to point out that in Outlook, you can email your class. And this is how you would do it. You would start with a 1, add the two-digit year. You would add the term code. 
And you can see one for mini master, two for spring, three for summer, four for fall. Add the ID, add the three digit course number, the three digit section number, and then at Towson.edu. And then you're going to go ahead and that'll email the whole class for you. Okay, Towson University Wireless. If you're a TU employee, you're going to access TU Secure. You're going to access the campus through TU Secure. That's the wireless network name. Now, all you need is your net ID and your password to do that. If you need to sponsor a guest, then there's a website that you would go out to to do that. And I'm going to take you out and show you that. You would, you can sponsor a guest for six days. But they have to get, uh, they should get their ID in advance. They don't have to, but they should. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to take you out again to the web browser. And I'm going to type sponsor.calson.edu. Again, net ID and password. It is required that you do have some kind of email address for them. I am going to, under Create Accounts, I'm going to click on Create Guest Account on the left-hand side. And those things that are required are starred. So first name, last name, the email address is required. And then you have, you have two options from here. You can either email this information to them, or you can call them and give them the information. Either one. So thank you for sitting through the new faculty OTS orientation. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. My name is Cindy Caravello, and um, I would have, be happy to answer those questions for you. Or if you would like a copy of this presentation, feel free to call me, and I will make this presentation available to you. Um, Again, welcome to Towson, and thank you for taking our online OTS orientation. Have a wonderful day.